Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Loops Reptiles, and today we're going to cover a very, very important topic. And I'm going to tell you the one person that you should listen to when it comes to ball pythons. That's right. There is a bunch of voices out there, including yours truly, uh, on YouTube, on Facebook, uh, on you know whoever is in your local town. You name it, it's out there. It's telling you different things. And there is literally one that you should listen to, and only one. And I'm going to tell you that today. And you're probably thinking... Well, gee, Matt, if this is your channel and you're going to tell me that one person you'd listen to, it's probably going to be you. It's kind of a stupid video. It's not me, okay? Um, so you're probably thinking, well, if it's not you, why in the holy shit show am I watching this? And that's a damn good question. But let me tell you who that person is. The one person you really need to listen to is you. And let me explain, because if you're new to this, you're probably thinking, oh, I've heard so many different things. I don't know what's right or what's wrong. So how could I be the one person that I actually need to listen to? Well, it's really simple. I can show you the way that I do things. And I can show you what I've learned. And I can show you what has worked for me. And I can show you what didn't work for me, because I'm not a lot of that. I can show you all of those things, and I'm willing to be transparent and do that. There are other people who are willing to show you and tell you what's worked for them and all of those same things. There are some people who are willing to just show you the good and they're going to lie through their teeth to make it sound better than it is. But um, all of those people have something to offer. So I can give you an example. I can show you the substrate we use, why I like a coconut-based substrate, why I like a rack system, why I like all of these things, why I like spider, for instance, uh, why I do what I do. And then somebody else can go and tell you why they like a glass cage, uh, why they like a lot of junk in the enclosure. Another person can come and say, hey, this is why I like paper towels in my enclosure. And guess who's right? All of them. And none of them. And that seems like some mystical bullshit. But it, it's, the simple fact is this. Uh, there is more than one way to do things. And you have to find what works best for you. So my challenge for you guys is when you go here and you're finding YouTube, don't watch just one person unless it's me. Uh, but if you're only going to watch one, at least let it be me. I need to get paid, y'all. Come on now. Uh, but don't watch just one person and take one person's advice. You should get advice from multiple pieces. Okay? And then you should use what works for you because you're the one person who's going to be right because it's you're breeding or keeping it's your show for your animals so use that whatever works for you that you take from me that you take from this guy over here that you take from this guy over here you take from this guy over here little bits and pieces that are going to make up your own style as long as your animals are healthy happy and taken care of that's the best way to do it you know a, a really good example of that too is how we incubate eggs. There is a lot of people that I know who incubate eggs the exact same way we do. They're going to put them in a substrate of like perlite. They're going to put a barrier on the top, have that perlite very, very wet, have the eggs suspended above, and they're going to hatch just fine. There's a lot of people who are going to use some kind of uh, like, oh, mixed up crap that's not perlite. Can't think of the name of it right now. It's kind of golden color. They're going to have their eggs built into there, kind of half buried in there, and they're going to stay there, and they're going to hatch just fine too. There's a handful of people who do maternal incubation and have different levels of varying success with it. They all work. There's not one that's wrong and not one that's right. We get so tied up in today's society of you're on team A or team B. And you've got to be with this person, or you've got to be with this person, or you've got to think this person's great and everybody else sucks. You know, you've got to be a fan of this and everybody else sucks. You know, you've got to like ball pythons, hate everything else. You've got to be a venomous keeper and hate everything else. You have to free handle, don't free handle, cut eggs, don't cut eggs. Use paper towels, use substrate, use a rack, don't use a rack. But it's not a team game. This is an individual thing. Your challenge should be against yourself. You should always be working to increase your level of keeping, um, working on your craft, how to be better successful with your eggs, with your babies. We're constantly doing the same thing. That's why I track all my numbers. And you should be stealing and robbing from everybody little pieces that work for you. Uh, I've done the same thing. You know, I stole my litter. Actually... Uh, found that from a guy in Florida or Chicago. I don't remember. Before it had a Brian Barczyk's face on it. It actually wasn't even branded as Brian Barczyk yet. It was had a whole different name called like, I don't know, some hippie sounding shit. And then he got involved with it. But we were using it from before then. 
and liked it when they gave me some testing and I really liked how it worked. It was kind of a hybrid between the chunky coconut and the dirty coconut. So I really liked that stuff and I used that. I decided to use racks from watching multiple people and seeing how much easier the cleaning and care of it is. I decided not to use paper towels because I just don't like them. I also think the snakes for me need to be able to nest and bury and move that dirt around and kind of do what they would normally do which they really can't do on a paper towel so for me the paper towels didn't work um all of those things made a difference and i didn't come up with any of it on my own i stole every single piece i stole the incubation method i didn't invent that shit okay i watched how others did it and i found that that worked for me However, there is not one person who I could say, I do it exactly like that guy does. And I stole everything from that guy. I took a piece, I took a piece, I took a piece, and I'm still doing that to this day. And I will be doing that as long as I'm in this industry. Because if you ever think you have it all figured out, you stop growing and you stop learning, right? So my point I want to make, and this is not going to be as long of a video as normally, but... Do not buy into the one person knows all, okay? Uh, because the only person who can make it work for you is you, right? So you have to learn, take, find what works for you, and what works for you may not work for others and vice versa. That's been my experience, and I'm pretty happy with the results we have and where we're at as we're starting to do our, our push into doing this even more. So that's kind of where I'm going. Uh, Kurt, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, it's kind of the same thing, but it's flipped the other way. Yeah. Um, I Don't be the person that thinks you know everything and has to tell everyone that they're doing it wrong. That is very accurate. Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. Look, there is a time to tell people when something is done wrong. You know, there, there is. Like if it's something that you know can cause damage or is not going to be successful. Now, if it's just because it's different than how you do it, let that shit be. And if you do see something, at least how I like to do it, if I see something that I know is not going to work, uh, I don't like to publicly call that person now because all that does is put them in a defensive corner and you're never going to get anywhere. Hey, Facebook, I'm looking at you. Man, pull them aside, DM them, whatever you need to do. And say, hey, look, man, I know you're working hard, but let me tell you from my experience with this, this is not going to be our, hey, I know you're talking about this pairing, but because of of this and this, you know, that pairing isn't going to be the best pairing because it's spider to spider, spider to champagne. I want to make sure you know that those combinations are lethal and try to uh, correct that and give them an article, give them some evidence that they need. But if you call them out in public, you're not going to get anywhere. But yeah, don't be the know-it-all. Don't be the, hey, I am the god of all things ball python, therefore everybody should bow down and kiss my ass, because uh, you're not. I'm not. Nobody really is. It, we're all going to learn and, and go together. I believe the phrase that I always hear is a rising tide raises all boats. Let's be a rising tide, right? Um, but when we start fighting amongst the boats, we're going to sink a ship or two. Let's not. We don't need to do that. We need to bring everybody up. Excellent point. Don't be an asshole is what Kurt basically said. Caleb, anything you want to add? No. See, Caleb just got caught rabbit hole in the cell phone. He went paying a look of attention to what the hell was being said. Where are you? No, I was not. No, he was <laughs> not. And on that note, guys, that is all I've got. And we will see you next time.